Hey guys, it's Jamie and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to do something a little different. This week's speed build is inspired by Edward Hopper's The House by the Railroad. It's funny, it's going to be different even though it's just another Victorian mansion. But what makes it different is we are trying to replicate The House by the Railroad as best as we can in The Sims, which there's a few issues. Alrighty, so as you may or may not know, I'm an artist and an art historian. I spend a lot of my time painting and looking at art. While the Victorian period isn't one of the ones I studied in college, it's still one of my favorite periods. I'm super interested in not just the era itself, but also how the Victorian period has aged over time. Alright, so the Victorian period was a time of great change in financial success for many. It was also a time of great social inequality and financial inequality. The Victorian style was more popular with the newer rich class. This class of newly rich people made their money in many industries that were spreading like rapid fire throughout the Western world, specifically in the United States. Some of these industries might be stuff like clothing and shoe factories, railroads and railroad production, um, and just, you know, other factories in general. Think of like the Lowell Girls and all these horror stories we hear of women working in factories. This time was also known as the Gilded Age of America because of, you know, it was right after the Civil War, and it was, that was a great time of, you know, real sadness. A lot of people were dying. There was also, um, at the forefront, people were having to you know, honestly, for the, one of the first times, specifically, white people very honestly had to address slavery. And um, as we know, the we are still kind of dealing with that here in America. The Victorian style, though, came out of the Gothic Revival um, style. The Gothic Revival saw the rebirth of the late medieval style known as Gothic. Gothic was focused on height and light, as well as opulence and beauty. The Gothic churches were covered in these like, kind of grotesque gargoyles and friezes depicting Judgment Day with a heavy emphasis on sinners and going to hell. You see this a lot above doors entering into the church. And then on the inside of the church, was dedicated to like a heavenly space these beautiful stained glasses that created these this ethereal experience and these shrines dedicated to christ and his salvation for humanity so while the exterior was the exterior was of sin and damnation the inside was about salvation and redemption and the Gothic Revival period restored many Gothic churches throughout France, Belgium, Holland, Germany, and the UK, but it also brought that style to the United States. We see um, a lot of Gothic churches, Gothic Revival style churches, um, popping up in America, this time specifically in Boston and the East Coast. And then that also brought the Victorian house style over and the newer rich saw this is something beautiful elegant and a way to display their new wealth as well as a way to emulate europe and the european rich however now we no longer associate the victorian style with beauty and riches it's become creepy and associated with decay and death the victorian period came to an end roughly around world war one it kind of lingered a little it was kind of on its way out a little bit before that though um many people were moving towards more modern aesthetics um this interest in revamping the past was kind of abandoned um we see this echo throughout the whole art community not just in architecture um the pre-raphaels who had been 
very popular. We're beginning to fall out of favor and we're being, you know, replaced with surrealism and cubism and all these modern era arts. The world was rapidly changing during this period. Um, you know, World War I, the war to end all wars as they called it, really changed the mindset of people living in the early 20th century. The Victorian period and Victorian houses were now beginning, beginning to be seen as wasteful and over flamboyant. Um, you know, by the time the Great Depression hits, the Victorian style was pretty much obsolete. You um, don't really see people building in it. You see a lot of these homes being abandoned. And you know, as Victorian homes were falling apart and beginning to decay, they were kind of being used as boarding homes and then slowly becoming more and more abandoned as, you know, the Great Depression moves on and we start moving out of that. Um, the delicate and extreme details began to rot off of these homes, like these very beautiful, ornate details and kind of gingerbread roofing, as it's called, um, really was just, you know, rotting off the buildings. Um, so, you know, it's not hard to see how the style is now becoming a, associated with, like, rot and decay, because these abandoned, once beautiful homes are now abandoned and literally decaying in front of people. You know, um, you know, and it's really interesting because much like the Gothic style at the end of the medieval period, um, as the Renaissance was moving in, that style was being rejected. Um, the Italian Renaissance saw it as, you know, ugly, opulent, um, just like utterly disgusting. Um, and we see that kind of happen here, except rather than with the Renaissance, they went back to more Romanesque, as it's called, Roman-inspired architecture. Here in the U.S., we actually just were moving towards more modern, in those kind of like mid-century modern homes. Um, you know, so I think that's really interesting, that kind of odd comparison. So uh, Edward Hopper painted the house by the railroad in 1925. The painting is haunting and creepy. The house appears to be empty and also distant, um, as if almost removed and in, in the past. So as early as the 1920s, these homes, which, you know, hadn't been completely abandoned yet, um, and, you know, some of the newer rich were still kind of living in them, um, you know, things like people like great the um, like Gatsby from the great Gatsby he and people like him the newer rich who are making money and kind of maybe in these newer industries and, and in some cases even some not so great industries um were living in these you know disgustingly opulent houses many critique critics and critiques of the time were calling for it um so you know by the 1920s these homes are already being coded as creepy and antiquated um and then came in you know the 1930s cartoonist charles adams who is and these characters he created that would you know soon be known as the adams family and they were this reclusive and oddly wealthy collection of morbid family members and they were you know a satirical inversion of the ideal 20th century family in November of 1945, Charles Adams finally gave us a look at where the Adams family was living in this decaying Victorian mansion. Um, from, you know, kind of from then on there, the Victorian house would always be a signifier for something ghoulish and dark, all because he put the Adams family, like, in this decaying Victorian mansion. Of course, you know, this was already something that people believed. They were already looking at these homes and thinking, ooh, it must be haunted, it must be creepy, but we can't underplay the role Charles Adam has here. You know, because like after him then, you know, we have like Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho where there's the creepy Victorian house on the hill above the hotel. And, you know, you're just looking at it, you're like, you know something's wrong. Um, and even in um, interviews and in the trailer for the movie, um, Hitchcock kind of talks about how creepy and sinister the house is. Um, 
you also see this kind of um in the remake of it the um creepy house that one of the boys passes is a victorian home and you know it's very common from you know in nowadays for the victorian house to be a signifier that something was dark and creepy about to happen think um the pink palace in Coraline. they definitely picked a victorian style not just because you know it matches the idea of pink palace because you know a lot of victorian homes were brightly colored and very over the top but um it also signifies to us as the audience that something is wrong um <laughs> and you know it's really interesting because um it's not just that we now look at victorian homes as haunted or dangerous we even really focus on the victorian period um as being a time that's dangerous and dark and full of death and you know and this is not 100 percent incorrect um rampant death rates were up at the time there was great social inequality when you have this newer rich coming in there's a lot of people underneath them suffering and living poor um you know and then also there's still a shadow of of slavery and then kind of this new awakening um a very very violent racism here in america um so you know like the victorian period's not perfect um but you know when we think of it you know we think of all this death and we think of arsenic wallpaper and death dolls and there's even a part of the victorian period where it was not uncommon for women to actually combust into flames due to highly flammable compounds in their dresses and makeup uh, but you know on the flip side the victorian period was a great time for the arts it was a great time of progress um for every social inequality there was also progress being made and it was also a really you know it was a really great time for america to begin trying to rebrand itself and find its new identity in kind of this post um civil war climate of course you know they don't really find it and it's really terrible because once again it's built on inequality and all these problems um but you know there was also a lot of fun in the victorian period um we don't really talk about it though <laughs> even i someone who loves the victorian period very rarely talk about how fun it was and all the great things that were happening um maybe it's because you know it's kind of hard also to convince people of this stuff now because you know we're so set in our ideas that the victorian period is creepy dark and victorian homes are dangerous and creepy but anyway so i was inspired by this painting because it captured how the shifting views of the victorian style really affected everyone um and I love that Strangerville has these Victorian homes and the Victorian build mode items. Um, you know, Victorian homes are seen as creepy and strange. So it makes sense that this elite of Strangerville who have seemed to have gotten their wealth in a very mysterious way um, in the biography for um, that upper hill part where they all, the rich people lives, it even kind of states that, you know, their wealth is mysterious and kind of creepy. So it makes sense that these people would be living on top of these hills, towering um, over the rest of the town. Because, you know, there's some shady stuff going up there. But yeah, thank you for watching this um, this speed build. I hope you guys really liked it. Uh, I couldn't 100% get it the way I wanted. And that's just because, you know, it's great, it's, it's great as The Sims 4 um, build mode is. Um, it's still limited and that's just how it's always going to be because it's a game. <laughs>